going to keep the conversation at this stage, Ian, focused on autonomous capacity and that opportunity there. We heard from Cathy Wood there. Hopefully you were able to hear some of it as well. She was really talking about the opportunities and how Tesla is in pole position when it comes to autonomous driving. What is the picture here in China? How is the autonomous sector evolving in China and what are the opportunities for you? Uh Autonomous driving, I believe, uh, for really the investment opportunity going forward is one of the major, major areas we're looking at. And the arrival of autonomous driving uh, in the consumer's um, uh, hand and also in commercial situations, I think that will be faster than what many people are uh, projecting. Um, we have built out a portfolio in the area. Um, uh, car makers are very aggressive to launch their product in the autonomous driving space. Um, NIO has uh, announced its next generation of product that will go into the consumer's hand next year. And then uh, in the commercial part, we see companies which are launching level three uh, autonomous driving trucks at the end of this year. Uh, one of our portfolio, Inceptual, is uh, doing that. We have companies which are running autonomous driving trucks, imports, moving containers around 24-7. So we believe uh, the world of autonomous driving is coming uh, very fast. OK, and to the here and now, because that is still somewhat in the future in terms of when you start to monetize autonomous, but the here and now, that competition amongst electric vehicle makers here in the Chinese market is heating up. You've got the incumbents, but then you also have the likes of Evergrande, the property developer, and Foxconn as well, getting into this. Is that a sign of froth, do you think, in the sector? Um, there are uh, quite a lot of new entrants uh, into the electric vehicle world. But keep in mind, the electric vehicle penetration now in China is only about 6%. Uh, the overall market of automotive, uh, China is the biggest market in the world. Um, every year, China sells about uh, 25 to 30 million vehicles. Um, it is the biggest market in the world, but the penetration of electric vehicle is still very small. We expect that to grow tremendously in the coming decade. In fact, we're seeing the penetration of electric vehicle in countries like Norway have reached 60 to 70 percent. We believe that will happen for China as well. Uh, more entrance into the uh, space will offer more product choices to consumers and business, which is a good thing. Um, but I also want to say that uh, going forward, I think um, to be competitive in the market, you need to have a product which consumers are willing to pay for, they're, they're willing to buy because it's a better product uh, when you face competition from other players. And um, we're talking about uh, acceleration, we're talking about in-car experience, we're talking about range, uh, we're talking about a lot of different factors um, that will come into, um, you know, when consumers are making their decisions. But then going forward, it's, it's also about how smart the car is. The autonomous driving solutions, for example, and the in-car experience that you're offering to consumers. So there's a lot of variables going forward it's not just, you know, you build a car, uh, an electric vehicle, that will make sure, uh, ensure that you have a, a market share in the marketplace. You need to build a very competitive product and you need to invest in technology. You need to have uh, a great understanding right. in consumers, uh, yeah. what they want. And so really to build a fantastic product going forward, that's the winning formula for participants in the marketplace. Yeah, Ian, and a lot, of, a lot of technology, a lot of parts go into, of course, making that final product. Now, if it's crowded on the actual sort of, uh, you know, uh, EV maker uh, part of the value supply chain there, talk to us then where the opportunities are across that, because you can go all the way from capital goods, all the way down to parts makers, all the way downstream. Where do you think is the most underappreciated part uh, of that entire chain? Yeah, so as a fund manager, we invest in the entire ecosystem. Um, uh, automakers obviously is one part of it. Um, but then, as you mentioned, if you go up to the supply chain, there are many areas to deploy capital into. Um, for example, uh, in the space of battery, giants have been created. We've invested in companies like CATL. Um, but the technology continue to evolve. Um, 
Now uh, there are new technologies going into the solid state battery space. Um, still a very uh, exciting space to deploy capital into, particularly when you have advanced technology. Uh, and then computational platform. I think the uh, car infrastructure will be very different going forward. And uh, how do you, um, what component or technology company can build the best computational platform? And then sensors, um, including cameras, lidars, uh, sensors that will capture uh, data right. on the road and help car to make better decisions when autonomous driving comes. Um, and then also uh, when we talk about smart cockpit, a better in-vehicle experience going forward, very exciting areas to deploy capital. But that's only on the automotive side. Um, but I think this whole uh, right. transformation going to the energy space as well, tremendous opportunity to go into the energy uh, investment. Right, so Ian, it's hot there, and as Tom was pointing out, maybe some froth. You know what's also hot? The exit market, IPOs, whether that's traditional listings, your SPACs, what have you then. Do you think valuations right now in the public markets, do you, is that pulling up valuations in the private markets for you? Um, the public investors, um, they are valuing the company at, uh, at a valuation. I think it demonstrates that people believe uh, the, the disruption of new technology going to the automotive industry is real. People are willing to pay up uh, on, on, the, on the stock. And that has definitely created strong interest for private investors to invest uh, in companies uh, in the private rounds. Um, but this space, the opportunity side uh, is so big and the space uh, have the potential to generate companies reaching valuation of uh, unicorn companies or, or even much higher, which has demonstrated by Tesla's and Neo um, because of the uh, sector opportunity is very big. So I think yeah. the winning formula Ian. is really to pick the winners. Your ability to pick Ian, the leading this? company in the space and invest into those companies mm. and they will generate the good uh, returns for investors. Okay, Ian, I just want to get your views on what's happening in terms of semiconductors. Of course, you have this shortage. It's impacting some of the car makers as well. And then you have this debate that's playing out in the U.S., also here in China, about indigenous innovation, bringing some of that smart chip innovation and production back onshore, whether that's in China or the U.S. What are the opportunities around this? What are you seeing in terms of the supply constraints as well on the supply chains for chips? Yeah, that has been a very heated topic in the last two years. Um, uh, it is really at the center of the U.S.-China trade war. Um, I wouldn't invest in semiconductor 10 years ago, but now it's becoming a very important area to, to invest because I believe there will be a parallel universe created in the technology world, uh, particularly uh, in relation to semiconductor. If car makers and other uh, companies have a fear of uh, supply in computational platform, there will be sourcing uh, at least from an alternative source perspective to buy um, you know, computational chips from Chinese suppliers. And hence, there's a very important investment area to go into that space. So we're actively investing in, in chips um, to which supply better, more advanced um, uh, computational capabilities for autonomous driving, for uh, vehicle control, for a lot of the areas that require semiconductor uh, suppliers. It's a very exciting opportunity uh, in the Chinese uh, technology investment area.